Hi everyone, and welcome to Trax Power Dolly. Today, I want to show you our X2, a new model. This will be an unboxing video. If you thankfully decide to order one, this is what you will get, and I'm gonna go through step by step how to unpack it, put it together, and how to work it. So here we go. To begin with, this comes in a wooden crate, as you see. And just so you know, the crate is gonna arrive, it's gonna be 48 inches wide, by 30 inches by 18 inches tall. And the crate weighs 370 pounds. So they're gonna bring it to your door with a tailgate service um, LTL transport truck. So just be aware that's how it's gonna work. Uh, to open this crate, you are gonna need, starting off, I believe this is a number two square drive, uh, either a screwdriver or if you have a power driver, it makes it a lot easier. We're gonna go take all of these screws off all around the outside. So we maybe have more screws than necessary, but the last thing we want is for damage to happen before it arrives at your house. Okay, I think that's all the top. So come and have a look and see what's inside. We're gonna open up our lid. You'll see a piece of white protective foam. Underneath the foam, here's the power dolly inside. You can see it's big and juicy. It's got rubber steel belted tank tracks. This was a fairly robust machine. Inside the box, you'll notice attached to this front sidewall is their ball mount. So we're gonna need to be careful. As we undo this, we're gonna just tip this off. So I'm gonna go around, keep on doing screws here. Let's take a look inside and see what we have. Uh, we're just gonna lift this rubber bungee up, open the lid up, and it's gonna stop against here. Uh, you can see inside, there's a, uh, a battery strap. This keeps your batteries from coming loose if the machine flips over for some reason. You just pinch that, this will fold out of the way. Here, this is a uh, USB charger base for the remote handset. So you would set the handset on there. There's a couple connectors that actually charge the batteries inside the remote handset. And there's a box in here. And we're gonna open this up and you will see we have a bunch of goodies. There is, uh, these are three battery quick connects that we're gonna connect onto the batteries. Here are the terminal boots. So these little guys will go on here and protect the terminal of the battery so nothing can short out against the metal. Uh, this is our remote control handset. You'll see there's a couple little metal tabs on the back and that sets on this base for charging. And then we've got some uh, other accessories for the trailer connection. Here's another, there's a two inch ball we include. We have an angular wedge I'll show you in a minute that if you have um, an uneven coupler on your trailer, we can wedge it up. And also as an extra support on the ball mount, we have this coupler that will go on to your trailer jack leg and then a turnbuckle. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Okay, one quick thing we need to do during shipping, this antenna receiver has been lowered down um, just so that antenna is protected during shipping. We need to raise this box up. So you're gonna see, we need to, again, a number two square drive uh, screwdriver, just like we used to take the crate apart. There's two screws here, one on each side. And if you look, there's a long slot on the plastic body there. So we're gonna loosen each screw. We just need to loosen it like a turn maybe. Then we're gonna slide the whole unit up as high as we can get it. And then we're gonna snug them back up again. Now, you don't need to make these crazy tight. You just want them snug. Now that antenna is up much higher. And then you will notice when we close the lid and our antenna goes through, basically it protrudes plenty enough. There's a wire inside of there and then it'll get full signal with a thousand foot range. So now we're gonna go ahead with the batteries. If you do decide to get the batteries from us, they will ship separately. They won't ship with the machine or you can buy the batteries locally on your own. We have three 12 volt batteries. As we open these up, you'll see that the bolt hardware comes with the batteries, not with the unit. So if you do buy your batteries separately, those bolts will come with them. 
we're going to open these guys all up and I'm going to show you how we connect the quick connects. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this foam stuff here. So each of these little bags of screws, we're going to open up. And to assemble this, you're gonna want, now this stuff is all metric because it comes from overseas. You're gonna want a 10 millimeter wrench, uh, either two 10 millimeter wrenches or a wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. You can see on the end of there, you can use either the wrench or you can use a screwdriver. Okay. So there's uh, little plastic covers that are gonna come on the batteries. These are just garbage now, take those off. Uh, we're going to open up the bag of little rubber boots. They're sticky little guys. Okay, there we go. Now, on the battery connectors, you will see a red wire and a black wire. And you'll see on the red plastic body, positive for red, negative for black. And that is gonna correspond with the battery itself. Red is positive, black is negative. If your batteries don't have this, you get your battery somewhere else, they will say a positive and negative on the battery. This is important. So what we're gonna do, take a red boot like this, we're gonna slide it on, and you'll have to manipulate it a little bit. Red on the red side, black on the black. Like so. Now, we're going to basically spread this out like this. We're gonna go uh, with each bolt. There's two washers, actually one washer. One washer and a lock washer and a nut. So definitely black on black. Flat washer, lock washer, and then the nut. Same over here, bolt goes in, terminal end, we get a flat washer, we get our lock washer, and then our nut. Okay, now with our 10 millimeter wrench, we put the wrench on here, snug this guy up, get them nice and tight, you don't want to Strip the thread, but get them snug. Okay, now, these rubber boots, we want to basically slide them over and cover all of the exposed metal. So you do need a little bit of finagling to get it on there. And sometimes a screwdriver can help. We'll just get it in underneath. There, that's what we're after on, on all of the terminals so there's no bare metal exposed. Okay, now we're gonna repeat that on the other two batteries. Okay, now that we have our three batteries together with the battery quick connects on, first thing we're gonna do is I need you to get an extension cord plugged into the wall with just a single plug because some extension cords have three plugs or whatever, just a single plug You'll notice on the front of the machine, we have our power switch. We have a charging port. This is where we're gonna plug our extension cord into. So when you need to charge the batteries, you're just gonna plug that guy in. Uh, we also have a battery meter. We have a power light, an e-stop. And this is your seven-way connector to activate your trailer brakes. So we have power plugged into the unit which is basically gonna go straight to our battery charger. For the very first time, now, we, we do set this at the factory, but we want you just to verify, because this is a smart charger. It'll do standard chargers, it'll do AGM batteries, it does lithium batteries, it will actually rejuvenate a dead battery. It's important we have it in the right mode. So you'll see down here, so we have power on, we can see that, and we have, them, we have a button for each of the three batteries. Uh, that first light would be standard, 
that would be AGM, that would be lithium. We are using an AGM battery. So the ones that we recommend are a glass mat battery. So that's the setting. So for the first time, we're gonna, this is gonna be tricky, but we're gonna kinda just prop these guys up so we can connect them. So we see that one right away jumped up to AGM mode. That's what we want. This guy we're gonna throw in. That one's on AGM mode, it came up. Last battery we're gonna drop in. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see our last battery, it's not set. We just had the light there. So I'm gonna need to push that button once, twice. So once, twice. Now it's in AGM mode. So now it's telling us that these two batteries are basically full. It's just reading the last battery right now. But the beauty of this charger is it's smart. It charges each battery separately and it will always bring your batteries back into balance if for some reason they come out of balance. That can happen if you're drawing a big load, let's say out of the seven way to your electric brakes. It's only pulling 12 volts from one battery. This charger will bring everybody back into balance. So every time you start up is a fresh start. Okay, so now we're gonna just load the batteries. We know that the charger is set. All three are set to AGM. So what we wanna do, of course with this strap laying underneath the batteries, we're gonna go our first one and just watch these cords. You wanna just make sure they're not sitting on a cord. All right, so the first battery, I want the poles or the terminals towards the center, actually on both of them. And then our middle battery, doesn't really matter. We can go this way. Okay. So we're going to hook this. Everybody's in, and we can look down the side, and we can see all of our all of our lights are going. So from now forward, every time you just plug it in, it'll automatically return to the AGM mode. Now we're just going to tighten up this battery strap, and this just keeps things from falling apart if, for some reason, the machine gets turned upside down. So just snug that up. Everybody's in. Uh, there's a couple circuit breakers here, just to point out, in case something happens, any like super high load on a motor, this could pop. Very rare that that ever happens, but that's a reset breaker on the two motors. And we close the lid, and we just want to make sure that the antenna sticks up. Get that guy up, and we're set. Okay, so we're finally ready to start the machine um, with the remote. Once we get this going, we can actually just drive it off the pallet. It'll be fine like that going over this ramp. Uh, so we're gonna turn the power switch on. You'll see our green light comes on here. Our battery meter shows a full charge. And I'll, I'll just shut that off and cycle it again so you can see it's when it's off. When it starts, it kind of goes through a ramp up cycle. Okay, we have full charge. Other important thing is this e-stop button. We want to make sure it is in the up position because if it's down, uh, it will not allow the motors to drive. So we give it a return it, kind of a quarter turn clockwise, it'll pop up. We're good there. Now, on our remote control, we have a power button. So we're going to hold that power button for a couple seconds and let go. That flashing light means it's communicating. And when you do that, you'll hear a tiny little click inside there. It's not important, but it does open up a relay. So we should be ready to drive. We have uh, left track forward reverse, right track forward reverse. And when we're looking at our direction, we're calling this the front of the machine, where this cutout is. So we can just back up. And I'm just gonna slowly drive the machine forward. So both tracks slowly. Just nice and easy, it'll just tip over the front. 
away you go. You're ready to drive. Okay. Uh, we do have an e-stop button on the remote. So if we hit that e-stop, it'll kill everything. So you're here to click inside. The remote's still communicating. To activate it again, you need to actually shut it off. So we're gonna hold the remote until the lights go out, and then we start it up again. Now it's active again, but that's an e-stop. And just so you know, these buttons here are for um, other models. They're for linear actuators that we don't have on this one. So these aren't gonna do anything for you. It's just these two forward and reverse. So there's the remote. Um, other things to notice, when we ship the dolly inside, so this is where you're gonna hook onto your trailers. Inside, if you look down inside of there, there's actually a thrust bearing. So that already comes inside the machine. It's a rotation surface so that the trailer can pivot easily. So we're gonna take our ball mount and we just drop it in that hole. Rotate it. So this little tab here, this is gonna face forward to your trailer. Okay. Um, we have some wedge adapters we talked about, which are in our box of goodies. So if on your trailer, some trailers, if you get down and you look at the underside of the coupler, so you get back maybe eight feet to 90 degrees to the tongue, the underside of that coupler, if it's flat or parallel with the ground, you're okay using this. If not, you may want to use this wedge adapter. So we're gonna take this out. We have this puzzle piece here that can come out. And these pins correspond with the puzzle tab. So you can go in just like that and you're all set there. Okay, on some trailers, uh, if your connection is not as strong as you would like, uh, obviously when you put your coupler on here, close the mechanism, you crank the handle up as tight as possible. If it goes up really easy, it means you need to raise the ball a little, sorry, lower the ball a little bit. And if it gets to the point where you can't lift it up all the way, you need to raise a tiny bit by going counterclockwise. Ideally, you want it so it's basically all you can do to push that thing and snap it over center to get it as tight as possible. A second thing we have, though, is we've got this turnbuckle. On the bottom side of your trailer, um, this is designed to go around a jack leg on a trailer, or maybe we can hook onto your safety chain. Somewhere we want to connect this turnbuckle to this ring here. We want to open it up as much as possible hook onto the trailer, whether it be a safety chain, whether it's this on the jack leg, and then we want to snug this up so it's as tight as we can get it, so when we're pulling backwards, we have a second point of stabilization on the trailer. So that's pretty much it with our ball mount. The only other thing you need to know about is our charger base, which is quite simple. We just open it up. So you'll see there is a little USB connector and a wall adapter. So the USB just goes into, go that way, into the wall adapter. That plugs into your 110 outlet on the wall. And then our charger, you can see the two little brass connectors. And they're gonna marry up with these two pins here. You just set it on there. It's a magnetic base plugged into the wall and it'll charge like that and you're all set. So well, that's it with our X2. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please give our sales department a call at 519-860-8729.